Welcome back, guys. This is the Comic Foil, and we determined previously that we're not going to be able to take out the Viscount this week. Everybody... Everybody who could possibly take out the Viscount kind of needs a rest. Um, except for, say, characters like Ryu, who are off on... Wh where did we say Ryu was? On a vision quest? On a drunken bender? No, I think you're uh, continuing to meditate, Ryu. Or maybe it is a vision quest. So, that means it's a good opportunity for us to train other people, move the uh, progress bar of these around a little bit. Maybe one of these days I'll even get around to fighting the siren over here. Um... But not today. Today, there are too many lower-level characters that I want to train, including a young cleric named Ronic Hyrule. Uh, we're also going to train up... Deltane. Um, and we're going to train up Green. So yeah, this is going to be a uh, mostly lower-level group today, and I kind of like it. Um, we're also going to bring along the Green Scorpion. So th this is our group here. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of money. I'll have to see if maybe there's some trinkets that I want to part with. I can sell any duplicates, but I don't think I have any duplicates because I just haven't been taking trinkets. The only duplicates I have are these Worry Stones, and I don't want to sell those duplicates because they can really come in handy. Also, these three Talismans of Flame, but we can't get rid of those. They're, they're too important. So, what that does mean, unfortunately, is that I don't think I'm going to be able to really increase the weapons and armor of you guys. I don't think I can really afford it. Uh, Green Scorpion, I'll increase that stuff for you. Yeah, you see, that's already, like, all of my money. Um... But at least now you all have four weapon, four armor. Right? That's all of you. Yeah. Okay, so... Let's equip some trinkets. And we're gonna go into the ruins today. Find some more deeds and this cool Unholy Slayer's Ring. Um, that sounds pretty good. We have... If we go other places, we got portraits and new items for a Houndmaster. Or we have... That brings about Gentle Tide. I don't want to do that yet. Um, I guess the real question is, what am I trying to get? I want more busts, and I want more crests just to finish the rest of the stuff in the hamlet, but as far as districts go, I think the Altar of Light would be really nice, and that's going to take a lot more deeds. Also... Um, the bank would be good, and that's going to take more portraits. So, actually... Yeah, but that's a shorter level mission, and that feels kind of cheap. But then again, we don't want to buy a lot of supplies. So yeah, this might be the smarter option here. Short mission, get some training up for these four, get a couple portraits out of it, uh, decent uh, cudgel weight, which is a neat hound mutt, Hound Master item that I don't have yet. So that's what we'll do. Even though we don't need as much um, we, we don't need as much progress in the cove because there's already a boss waiting for us there. We can still take it. Um, let's take one more shovel. And yeah, that's all we're going to be able to take. Alright, um yeah, glad to have uh, Oscar on another mission here. Plus, we have Green, the Green Masaur, and the Green Scorpion. So, I might be shortening it to Green for Green and either Scorpion or Oscar. Or I might just be calling you Green Scorpion. You guys all know Oscar. So, explore 90% of rooms. We're all in a nice straight line here. It's not like we can rest or anything, so we're going to have to kind of hope our food lasts us, and we're going to not be activating those hives, because we don't want any extra battles in here. 
Um, been getting more stuff done with Oscar lately. Uh, not only are we finally started on dust, as you guys can see. Bulimic. Yeah, that's not a great... That's not a great thing to have. Um, but we got the Luigi's Mansion Q&A going on over there. So... Oscar, and I'm guessing you're watching this one because you've been following along with the series and especially because your character is in this one. Um, recently, I did not talk to Oscar about this, but uh, episode 6 of the Luigi's Mansion Q&A came out and one of the questions on there was what would be... Um, both of us watch a death battle, death battle, screw attacks death battle. Uh, and there was a question of what kind of death battles would you like to see on the show, which, by the way, I forgot one that I've always wanted that I didn't say during that episode, but I've always wanted to see Lapis Lazuli from Steven Universe versus Katara from Last Airbender, uh, uh, Battle of the Water Masters, but... I've also just realized that Deltane doesn't have the same abilities equipped. You have Withstand, which, um, yeah, maybe I'll just kind of, kind of keep those things for Deltane equipped. I think it might be good. All right, so this will be a nice way to get, like, a little bit of gold, not a ton of gold. So one thing I kind of wanted to try a little bit... Ah, careful there, Deltane. Deltane, you're not... Yeah, you just have Compulsive. You're not a, um... You're not a thief. You're not a kleptomaniac, which is a really bad problem. So one of the things, Oscar, I sorry I didn't ask your permission about doing this, but a lot of people were posting their own ideas of death battles they'd like to see. And I was I was looking at the comments section of that video. A lot of people posting them right before um right before I started recording this one. Um, not that I'm familiar with all these series, but I kind of wanted to do my own little version of, like, who would win or who I would expect to win from these death battles. And these are just, like, really right off the top of my head. Um, but something to talk about while I'm doing some fairly, uh, fairly, fairly repetitive battles here. So I thought I'd give that a try. Pick to the face ignores... Oh, wait. Yeah, armor piercing, it does, so that should kill. Be gone, fiend. Yeah, get that guy out of the way. Um, more people need healing. Okay, so one I really liked was Logan Jones said they'd like to see Popeye versus Asterisk. Um, Battle of the old Sunday morning comics heroes. Um... I don't know as much about Asterisk as I do about Popeye, so sorry if I'm playing favorites. For a while, I thought, well, Asterisk is, like, a Viking, and, you know, has, like, is training, um, I think the village chief's nephew in the ways of combat and stuff, and is war more of a warmonger, so I want to think that Asterisk, because they have more, um... That they have more experience in fighting, um, in fighting wars, but Popeye has a lot of experience in fighting scraps. He's fighting Bluto, a guy who's way bigger and stronger than him, all the time. Plus, he's got, he eats, um, no if he eats his spinach, he gets, like, super strength, allowing him to perform amazing cartoonish feats. I don't remember if a Asterisk had as many of these cartoonish feats. I'm sure we've seen Asterisk using, like, better we weapons, like axes and stuff, whereas Popeye is usually, um, hand-to-hand -hand combat. But Popeye, like, evokes a steam engine when he eats his spinach. The and, like, the strength of a steam engine, axe or n not, I don't think Obelix would stand a chance. Also, Obelix is almost always with his... Uh, Asterisk is almost always with his buddy Obelix. So if Obelix is not in concluded in this, I don't know if... Asterisk is really at his best, so I think I want to give it to Popeye. Um, another one I got here from Gunslinger Gilder, who asked Littering Storm versus the X-Men versus Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. 
And that's a very strange one, because they don't really have a lot of, like, similarities. Usually in these death battles, there's some kind of connecting tissue between the two of them. We got a Final Fantasy main villain. Uh, mage that gets enough power to become a god. I'm assuming they want, like, once they've, once they've got the power of a god. Versus Storm, who is a mutant with the power to control the weather and meteorology and stuff like that. Um, an Omega-level mutant, mind you. Storm is one of the more powerful mutants in the entire series. And that, you know, deserves some respect. I don't know if that stands up to spells like Ultima and Meteor and stuff like that, though. Um, I think God-level Kefka is going to be a little bit higher than Storm. I'm sure there's situations in the comics where Storm has gotten up to godlike heights. Because that sort of stuff happens in comics all the time. But I think Kefka has this one. I don't know. This is a hard one to put a yardstick up to. But I'm going to give it to Kefka with a mad respect to Storm. Um, let me get another one here. Okay. I haven't few here from uh, Nifiland. Uh, one of them is Bill Cipher versus Shuma Garath. Uh, Bill Cipher. So they're both um, extra planar deities of chaos and horror. Um, I want to say Shuma Garath just because in the comics we have more of a precedence for how much horror and chaos Shuma Garath can cause. Um, Bill Cipher seems to be a lot more intelligent, a lot more conniving, and has his own, like, amazingly weird powers he's done. But if you think about it, Shima Garath, it usually takes Doctor Strange and some allies to take out Shima Garath. Bill Cipher basically gets bested by Dipper and Mabel, two kids, with, like, a little bit more help. And he couldn't even get out of the, like, what was it called? Like, the weirdness barrier of... Gravity Falls, so I think I need to give that to Shuma Garath. I think there's just more horror, even though I love Bill Cipher. Um, Izuku Midoriya versus Miles Morales. Uh, simply put, uh, this this one's also from uh, Niffinland, or maybe it's N.I. Finland. Um, definitely Izuku. Um, Izuku has only gotten like a percentage of the max strength of All Might, but that's still, the power behind One for All is absolutely insane. I don't think Miles Morales with his spider strength could really hold a candle. Now, the thing is, the spider sense, which all of the spider folk have, should not be underestimated. The spider sense can protect you from a whole lot of stuff. Like, Spider-Man has easily bested other superheroes in the Marvel Universe. Uh, Peter Parker, at least, has done this. Uh, bested people in the Marvel Universe way stronger than himself just because with the spider sense they were having trouble landing a blow on him. Spider-Man once like survived an attack from all of the other Avengers at once just by jumping around. Uh, Peter Parker fought off Colossus and Magic when they were both empowered with the Phoenix Force. But... I think it would just be really hard for Miles Morales to land any kind of appreciable damage on Izuku. And I think Izuku would get the better of Miles eventually. So I'm saying um is I'm saying Izuku Midori on that one. Uh Shantae versus Sash Lilac. So um Sash Lilac from Freedom Planet, Battle of the Cool indie game girls. Um, I love Shantae. I really do. My problem with Shantae winning this is that Lilac has the speed advantage. It would be dragon boosting all over the place. I think that this would just be a case of like Lilac keeps like running past um, Shantae and dealing drive by hits and knocking her over. Um, if we're talking about, like, when Shantae has, like, the unlimited magic abilities, you know, she can stand more of a chance, but I just think, uh, Shantae might be stronger than Lilac, but would just have so much trouble keeping up. I, I think I need to give that to 
Lilac. Um, Captain Cold versus Killer Frost. I seem to remember Killer Frost being all around more of a threat in the comics than Captain Cold, but I'm not really sure. I would have to check. I'm going to tentatively give that to Killer Frost. They're both from a DC Comics. Um, oh wait, this was the Battle Royale. Mr. Freeze was also supposed to be in there. Ah, dang. Um, so Mr. Freeze versus... Mr. Freeze versus Killer Frost versus Captain Cold. I mean, they all have such similar things that they're doing. Um, I guess if I have to put it next to whoever their, like, usual opponent is, is you could say Captain Cold is the best because he's used to fighting the Flash, who is going to be... Whereas Killer Frost is used to fighting Green Arrow, I think. I don't know. That that one's kind of a toss-up for me. I, I'm feeling Killer Frost. I don't know why. I just... I can think of more examples of Killer Frost really being, like, a city-wide threat. Um... Mr. Freeze has built some really big weather machines that threaten all of Gotham, but that's, like, weeks of planning. That's not, like, a battle. Uh, so Daniel Fortescue versus Spinal from, uh, oh, whoops, you're guarded. Spinal from Killer Instinct and Sir Daniel from Medieval. Going for the stun there. Oh, well. Uh, that's definitely going to be Spinal. Killer Instinct is just such a brutal game, he would hit Sir Daniel like seven times before Sir Daniel could swing his sword twice. Um, I don't want to do too many from the same one, so... Uh, got one from Hornets Hollow Knight, who said, um, Sissel versus Danny Phantom. Uh, I was saying on that list that I wanted... Danny Phantom in a death battle and someone for them to fight. I just, I don't think Sissel is it. Sissel, Danny Phantom is a fighter. Sissel is like a problem solver. Uh, doing this to put Blight on the front guy. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm liking that. So, like, Sissel, Sissel can, oh, wait a second though. Wait a second. Ooh, spoilers for Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, though. Um. No, Sissel is still Sissel. We're not... I could kind of play coy and play with, like, some of the things that they thought about Sissel. But, no. Sissel, the main character of Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, no. They can, they can mess with things in the environment. Um kind of stop time to screw around with stuff, but I think while they could annoy the heck out of Danny, I don't think they'd be able to really lay much of a finger on Danny, and I'm sure Danny's powers would be able to hit Sissel out of things. Uh, y you know, the, uh, the Ecto Blasts were always, were always able to hit their mark, were always able to hurt ghosts. It's not like the ghosts could phase through the Ecto Blasts. So, Danny's just... And then Danny would just, like, pull out the F Fenton... the Fenton Thermos and pull Sissel out of wherever they wanted him pulled out of. Let's open this, see what's in there. Money. Um... Let's get rid of the Citrines in favor of this gold. And keep moving on. I've kind of just, like daydreamed my way through most of this. So, maybe I'll do this again some other time, this who would win cast. If you have any ideas, um, feel free to put them in the comments here, because maybe I'll do this again. Um, okay, Andrew Haas has a bunch of them. I'll do some of them. Um, the T-1000 from Terminator 2 versus... Uh, the Nemesis Type T from Resident Evil 3, I think that is, Resident Evil 3. The way is lit. Um, is clear. 
We require only the strength to follow it. So, I mean, both of them are things that chase you that are impossibly hard to kill. They just keep coming back. They keep morphing and changing. I can think of more ways that the T-1000 could hurt Nemesis than vice versa, though. Like, the only things that really stopped the T-1000 were, like, liquid nitrogen and then being dunked in lava. I don't think the rocket launchers or, like, the tentacles, like, skewering the T-1000 or anything would really stop it. Okay, we're gonna actually retrace our steps then and do a little bit more than since we can. And since we know that we don't have to worry about a shambler in this level. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the list and not up. Uh. Here's another one, Izuka Midoriya versus Akko from Little Witch Academia. I I watched a little bit of Little Witch Academia. Is Akko the main girl, the, like, space cadet girl? I haven't watched enough, enough of the show to know if she, like, gets better at magic later on. All the episodes I watched were the earlier ones where she, like, literally never does magic. She just kind of, like, bumbles her way through witch school. So, even at that early stage of each anime, where Izuku's still, like, breaking his arms every time he does the punches, it would only take him one punch. He would- this would be a one-punch man fight. I- I think that that has to go to Izuku. Um, Meta Knight versus Dark Pit. So, what does the Smash Brothers meta say about that? I think it would say Meta Knight. Outside of the Smash Brothers meta, I would still have to say Meta Knight, just kind of thinking about the people- that they've canonically fought. Now, both our flyers can go very fast, can slash stuff up. Dark Pit does not have infinite flight unless there is a goddess helping him. He cannot actually even fly, like, fully. He could just kind of flap and move himself and glide. Meta Knight can fly supposedly for as long as he wants. I think it's way faster with a sword and has way more, like, big powers like the Mock Tornado than Dark Pit has. Um, and if I think about who they fight, like, Meta Knight, you know, has fought Galactonite single-handedly, which apparently is the strongest warrior in the Kirby universe. Um, we're talking, like, god-like levels, and Meta Knight has helped take down gods all the time. Dark Pit isn't really involved in any of the times that Pit fights gods. Like, Pit, with a bunch of, like, with a great sacred weapon and stuff like that, was able to best Hades. Dark Pit is, like, often losing to people like... Like Medusa and Pandora and stuff like that. Or I feel like he is. I don't know. I think I think Dark Pit just can't quite hold up. So, that one's going to Meta Knight. Uh, and Dimitri Maximoff from Darkstalkers versus Slayer from Guilty Gear. I feel like in Guilty Gear, everybody's... A little bit faster and more ridiculously powered. Like, Slayer is keeping up with everybody with that. Aw, oh, Crimson Curse. Crimson Curse Deltane, that's not good. Slayer's keeping up with all of his opponents without even really tapping into his unique vampire powers very much, which supposedly he has. Um, I think my phone just went off with something. Alright, I'm gonna try and find a few more. Here's one I liked a lot um, from. Trish Overman 47, who said Mandy from the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy versus Eric Cartman from South Park. Less a battle of brawn, more of a battle of wits. Um, think two characters kind of trying to screw each other over more than actually fighting. If it was an actual fight, definitely Mandy, because Cartman's a complete joke in all the fights he's in. Unless he's using that, like... He, unless he has the, like, the necklace thing, the, the, like, thing that buzzes him every time he curses, and it gets, like, the polarity reverse and gives him, like, Super Saiyan powers, but I think Mandy's had, like, crazy Super Saiyan powers in the past, too. Or, like, different things that have given her power. All in all, um, Cartman's 
more evil and sadistic, but Mandy wins more often. Like, there's lots of episodes of South Park where Cartman gets his comeuppance at the end. Mandy almost always comes out on top. She, I mean, she's regularly out smarting and out negotiating and out powering from sheer force of will the Grim Reaper and a lot of other, like, demons and monsters and stuff like that. I think this has to be Mandy, no matter what the contest is. Um, I don't know, maybe if you plunge into, like, Order of the Stick or, like, the South Park movie with that weird zappy collar or he's the coon or something weird like that. Okay, I'm out of food. I think I should probably fight this one battle that we have up here and then go. Yeah, they are just handing me so many invitations to this freaking place. Um, that's a pretty clever one, though, Trish. Thank you for that. Um, and the Roman Vulcan asked for Ruby Rose versus Margaret Moonlight. Um, Ruby Rose is... I'm gonna feel really stupid if I get this wrong. Is Ruby Rose... The girl from Ruby, like R-W-B-Y. Um, let me check that real quick, actually. Ruby Rose. Or is Ruby Rose actually... Are you talking about the actress? The Australian actress? No, 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 no. Okay, there is an actress named Ruby Rose. She was on Orange is the New Black. But, um... No, you're talk. <laughs> I'm assuming you're talking about RWBY. Um, versus Margaret Moonlight from No More Heroes 2. Uh... I haven't really watched Ruby that much. Everything I know about Ruby mostly comes from either word of mouth or... Seeing some of its characters on Death Battle... And I know that they're pretty resist ridiculous. They have that whole... They have their, like, protection field where, like, they basically have to take a bunch more damage before they can start breaking bones or feeling real pain. Um... I guess you could say that, like, mechanically, No More Heroes bosses kind of work like that a little bit, too. But... I think everybody in No More Heroes generally is a lot easier to kill than most of the main characters in Ruby, let alone the main character. Ruby would have a higher damage multiplier. It's cool that they both got scythes. Um, Margaret has double the scythes that Ruby has, and they also morph into a sniper rifle. But I think Ruby has the speed to be able to cover that distance pretty quickly. I, I, I think, based on what I know about Ruby, I think Ruby has this. Um, looking for, like, one more. Okay, Corbin Turbo. Tur G Colton Turbville, <laughs> sorry, um, asked John Talbane versus Saberwolf. So Darkstalkers versus Killer Instinct. This could go really either way because while I think the characters from Killer Instinct are stronger and faster than the ones in Darkstalkers, the ones in Darkstalkers usually have weirder powers. Um, and, uh, whoops, more mosquitoes. Okay, I'll kill more mosquitoes, that's fine. I don't even mind that we have a Paranoid Deltane. We'll, we, we, we're already practically done with this. Um, yeah, I think... Saberwolf is kind of like a mad, rampaging, mindless werewolf. Like, sometimes he has his original person whose name I forget's mind in there. But most of the time, he's just raging werewolf. While John Talbane, they make it a, uh, uh, they make it a point to tell you that he is a werewolf that is also a martial artist who has trained their spirit and mind to be able to stay in control while they're a werewolf and actually do Bruce Lee levels of kung fu while in werewolf form, including using nunchucks and shooting like key wolves. Um, so I. I think this one goes to John Talbane because John Talbane would maybe be able to use the environment and find a work or work around in a way to outsmart um, a way to outsmart Saberwolf. That that's 
that's kind of what I'm thinking. Alright, at least we got one of these guys out of the way. I'll do another one since I'm still in this battle here. Uh, Drawboy66 asked, Star Butterfly versus Steven Universe. That's a Star Butterfly from Star vs. the Forces of Evil, I think. I'm going to feel really stupid if I'm wrong, again. Um... But I'm a see. I've, I've watched a lot of Steven Universe. I'm a really big fan of Steven Universe. You know, I want to go up to bat for my boy Steven, who's really powerful. But I haven't really watched Star vs. the Forces of Evil. But the impressions that I get is that she can do all kinds of crazy magic. And I think... Like, Steven's really durable and has super strength and can create these shields and stuff like that. I just feel like maybe Star is equally durable and can do more weird spells that would probably include some kind of counter for Steven. So I am going to give it to her. Alright, Kareem's freaking out and I think, um... Reeling. Yeah, this is... Take him over the edge and we, we, we should get out of this soon, so let's... Quit yapping and finish this one off. See, this is the problem with me finding, like, alternate things to talk about, is that I pay a little bit less attention to what I'm doing. Do I want this move stone? I, I don't need this invitation. And, mm, one vial of blood's not going to make a big difference. So, okay. Okay, let's get out of here. Good job, team. There are a lot of other really good ones, even if you guys don't give me more, um, I could just grab more off of, um, off of episode 6 of Let's Play Luigi's Mansion on Oscar's channel. Check out that Let's Play, by the way, if you haven't already. So, Green Scorpion lost his Eagle Eye and gained, uh, Eldritch Hater. Deltane became spiritual. Green got Dipsomania. So, they have an intense craving for alcohol, and Ronic Hyrule got Compulsive, okay, but also got Meditator, which gives them improved stress reduction while meditating in camp. Uh, we also got Deltane, got the Crimson Curse, and um, Ronic got, uh, uh, what do you call it, Bulimia, which maybe is the first thing that I should treat. But I'm really happy about the amount of gold that I got from that, so thank you on that, Ronic. I will send you to get that bulimia treated. I still think the only way you really treat bulimia is with therapy, but what do I know? Um, Zane, Zane, you need to go to the brothel, because that's the only place that you're allowed to go because of uh, love interest. You insist on going to the brothel every chance you get. And Deltane, since you have the Crimson Curse, I can have you go in there, too. Not join him in the brothel, but go get a drink. Um, green, I'm just going to ha have you sit on that stress because I don't want to spend all of my money here. I'm going to want money for supplies. Let's take a look at the stagecoach. Anybody really good? No, not really. Uh, I see some other... You know, we got a man-at-arms, and we got a flagellant, and I have been wanting more of those, but I want them at higher levels. So, okay, thanks for, um, thanks for listening to me ramble some more. I'm going to use a few more of my crests that I've been building up, actually, because I do go to the survivalist fairly often to get people new camping skills. So I'm going to keep reducing the cost of that. I only need, um like 39 more crests to fully upgrade the bonfire at the survivalist so are we ready next week for another go at the viscount that would be i guess i would take phoenix this time i take ryu for the stress reduction and i would take Hedia for the healing and oh no sorry Hedia I would take George for the healing because George is at level 6 and I want as high a level person doing that as possible Hedia you'll have another chance later and then 
yeah, I think keep giving it to Victor, because Victor started us out there. Ooh, the Huntsman Corps. I never... I, I didn't remember that being a... That, that being a category. So, okay, this is the group that's going to try against the Viscount again next week. In the meantime, I'm the Comic Foil. Thanks for following along. I will see you next time.